All right, today we're gonna start our wiring portion, our electrical portion of the class. Um, the first thing that everybody's gotta be aware of is safety with power. Um, I know I talked about this a little bit before. Um, does anybody know how many amps it takes to kill you? 20 would kill you every single time if it went through your heart, every single time. Um, 15 amp would kill you. It, it only takes, uh, five, I think it's five one thousandths of a, or I'm sorry, five one hundredths of an amp to kill you if it goes through your heart. It'll kill you every single time. A normal outlet like that's in the wall there, um, is 20 amp here at the school. A lot of yours at home may be 15 and some are 20, depending on what room it's in, and that's by code. Um, but in the school, they gotta be 20 amp. Um, that's way over what it takes to kill you. And I'm sure all of us have been shocked by regular outlets at some time. Um, but if it, if it, when you got shocked, if that electricity went through your heart, it would kill you every single time. Um, so, which, that's just how you're grounded and where it's going. If you got shocked in this hand and this foot's on the ground, more than likely it's traveling through your heart. Okay, that's how easy that stuff can happen. So, um, we'll never work on any of this stuff with the power on. There are situations, and we'll get into it later, when you gotta test some things. Of course, sometimes when you test, you have to have the power on. But you, you gotta be working safe to be able to do that where you're not gonna get shocked. Um, so everybody knows power's got to go off. You guys kind of talked about this um, a little bit um, in OSHA, the lockout tag out. Um, lockout tag outs, when you're working on something, you lock it with a padlock. Keeps anybody else from being able to turn that on without removing that lock, and you're the one that has the key. So no one can, if you're working on this piece of equipment, and then somebody else comes over there and they, maybe they got a power problem. So they go over to a breaker box and they just click that breaker on while you're working on that. You know, that's how that stuff, that's to prevent that. So um, not that we're gonna be working with that power right now with that bigger stuff, but um, even with the smaller stuff, um, we're not gonna work with it hot. We're gonna always make sure the power's off. That's the most important thing. Um, next thing I wanna talk about um, there's different wire sizes and different types of wire. Um, starting out, this is a commercial building. This type of wire is called non-metallic sheeted cable. You cannot use this in commercial wiring. In commercial wiring, things have to be ran in conduit, like on the walls here, where it comes down to the plugs. That's called conduit. Um, that type of wire is separate stranded wire like this. So they get their pieces all set up, bent, their pipes bent where they need to go and hooked out wherever they need, and then they pull this wire through afterwards. Okay, they don't pull this type of wire. Um, it is pulled um, usually with a fish tape, and that's what this is. This reels out. You run that down. You tape your wire to this. Then you pull it back through to where you want it to go. Okay. Um, we will not get into too much of that, but we might play around with it a little bit. Um, when we went to that Career Expo, was there a wiring, was there an electrician spot there where they let you bend conduit or no? I didn't happen to see it. This, yes. Was it like that conduit on the wall, except for it's shiny, it wasn't painted? Okay. Um, so did they have you use one of these? Was it a conduit bender like this? Okay. Um, so this is made for half inch conduit. There's different sizes, um, three quarter inch. Of course you have to have a different tool for each size. Um, back to the wiring though, the sizes are the same, okay? They're a certain diameter of copper, okay? Um, if you look at this, see how it's stranded? Have any of you ever messed with um, your stereo in your vehicle or, or speaker wires, it's more stranded like this, okay? Where Romex, well, 
Romex is actually a brand. It's non-sheeted, uh, non-metallic sheeted cable. Um, that's a solid piece of copper in it. And that's one reason why you can't use this in commercial. One, it would be, this is a lot stiffer, so it'd be really hard to pull that through that conduit. Um, another, um, this doesn't heat up as much because of the separate strands. Um, so that's another reason you can't use it in commercial. Um, usually commercial, you're drawing a lot more power through your wires. Um, now with any of it, it comes in different diameters and it's for different amperage, okay? There's, there's codes on what you can, how many amps you can run through it. Um, do all of you have this type of breaker box at home? Some of you may have thread in fuses. Um, they work the same. Um, this is just resettable. Um, but depending on the amp breaker that you're using, that tells you what size wire you have to use. Of course, there's um, codes on what has to run to what, too, depending on what you're trying to power up. If it's a 15 amp circuit, you use this white, okay? And that is 14, this happens to be 14.2 with ground, which means it has a, a black wire, a white wire, and then a ground wire, okay? There's also 14.3, which it kind of looks round. It has an extra wire in there. Um, it's, it's red, okay? You do not use this type of wire. There's certain cases to use this wire. You don't use it to wire your outlets normally or lights. Um, it's for wiring stuff in series. Um, today, code says with a smoke alarm, and I thought I got one out, but I don't see it here. Um, smoke alarms have to be wired with this because they have to be set up where if this fire or this smoke alarm goes off, all of them go off in the house, okay? For something new and a new addition or a new house or a new building, it has to be wired that way. Now, some of you may not have that at home. It may be just battery operated ones. You cannot build something new and just use battery operated ones. It doesn't pass code. Um, it has to be wired in series. And what that third wire does that's the one that sends the signal to the other one. So if one goes off, they all go off, okay? Um, another reason for this, um, say you're operating two things at a switch box running to the same, like a, a, a ceiling fan light kit. So you would be able to switch them separately, turn the light on and then not have the fan on or turn the fan on, not the light. That's what that second wire would be used for. Um, that's another reason you would use this. Um, another one is a three-way switch. Does anybody know what a three-way switch is? A three-way switch is where you can turn lights on and off at two different locations. Um, and by code, when you walk in a room, you have to be able to turn a light on, okay? So switch at that door, we'll turn the lights on, but over here, there should be another switch to turn them same lights on or a light in the room. Sometimes you only have one light in the room. So you'd be able to turn it on and off there or turn it on and off here. That's a three way, only two locations. Um, now that's a three way switch. What about a four way switch? What do you think that is? What's that? Three locations or more. It could be 10 locations. It's still called a four way. Okay, and I'll show you later on. I want everybody to get the experience of wiring those two types. Um, they're pretty simple. There's a lot of different ways you can wire them. I show one way. When I wire mine, I only wire them one way because if you think about it, they're wired different ways. You wire, then usually it's drywalled. Will you come back a month and a half later? Are you gonna remember which way you wired if you keep doing them a bunch of different ways? No, you're going to be confused. You cannot see your wires, how they're routed anymore. All you have them is coming out of box. So I try to stick with one way um, to wire them. The thing nice about being able to wire them different ways is sometimes it saves you a little bit of wire if you wire them different ways, depending on the circumstance. Um, so that's three-way wire. We will not use this on your projects in here, okay? Um, but maybe when we get wiring on some of these walls, we will. Um, Back to the wire. Now the yellow wire, so the white wire is for what? What size circuit? 15 amp, yep. 
It's all it can run through that. You cannot run 20 amp through that. The yellow wire is 20 amp because it's got a bigger diameter. Now, you would think it's kind of like, I don't know, shotguns. You look at that, the gauge is, as the number gets smaller, it's bigger. It's kind of weird. And wire is the same way. Um, so 12 wire is bigger than 14. And then 10 wire is bigger than 12, and it goes down. Okay. Um, if you start at 14, knowing that 14 wire is 15 amp, the next is 12 wire, it goes up to 20 amp. Okay. Then after that, it jumps by tens. Okay. So that's the only one that's five apart. And then it goes, 10 wire would be for what then? 30. Yes. And that is this yellow. This happens to be. 10-3 with a ground, so um, they make that three wire in everything. Um, so eight wire would be for what? 40, so on and so forth. So six wire would be for 50, right? Okay, it goes on and on like that. Now, certain things have to be wired on a certain amp breaker. Um, like I said, general outlets, other than a kitchen, a garage, a basement, them are all supposed to be wired on 20 amp. Um, what else? A dining room has to be wired on 20 amp. Bathrooms have to be wired on 20 amp. But just normal living room or bedroom outlets, them can be on 15. They don't have to be, but they can be on 15. Smoke alarms have to be on 15. Um, so, talk enough about wire size. This wire for commercial comes the same way in different gauges, okay? This comes on spools, and it's usually a white spool. They'll have a cart, and they'll be on where they can just pull them and they unwind. There'll be the white, green. There's other colors. There's blue used for certain things. Green is always ground, right? Um, in Romex, the bare copper is ground, okay? The white is your neutral, and then your black is your hot. So it's a little bit different than in a vehicle. What is black in a vehicle? For low volt, or yeah, lower voltage, 12 volt system. What is black? It's usually the ground. Red is usually hot, okay? But in wiring in here, red, it's not. And red is hot when you're working with commercial or three-way wire. That is also a hot. But the normal hot is black. Okay, um, so that's enough about wire sizes, I think. I um, want to talk a little bit about mountain boxes. This, by code, there is a code on how you mount your boxes. Um, have any of you ever mounted these before? Has anybody messed with any electric? Okay. Um, And electrical inspectors are pretty picky about this, most of them. Um, if you look at a box, this is just a regular single gang box, this is called, used for an outlet normally or a switch. Um, on the side, there's a couple ears here, okay? Generally, what is in a house or even a building, what covers the walls? The biggest share of the time drywall, right? Okay, so these are kind of set up for drywall. Um, they have a little ear here on top and bottom. That tells you how far to stick that box out for half inch drywall. What code says is this box has to stick out within an eighth inch of the finished surface, okay? Um, you don't want it sticking out too far because then when you put your plate on, it would leave it away from the wall, right? And you want that tight to the wall. Um, there actually is a code on that. They can walk around with a card. It's a, eh, about as thick as that cardboard. And if they can slip that in anywhere between your plate and the wall, they can knock it down. They can say that's a code violation, okay? So they have to come out right. Um, so normally you leave that sticking out, but say you were putting three-quarter tongue and groove on a wall, um, knotty pine. Would you still just leave that sticking out that 
this is about three eighths is what it sticks out. You'd have to leave it more, right? So you can't go by them. So you'd actually have to measure them to get them right. Otherwise it wouldn't pass code. Um, when you mount these, Talking about an outlet, there are stipulations how high you can have them or how low. Um, when it comes to something handicap access, that changes it a little bit. Um, but at normal height of an outlet on a wall down by the floor, um, I go 12 inches to the bottom. Okay, You could go 16 to the top, and that puts it pretty close. It'll fall within code. Um, but I always measure mine to the bottom. So it's critical when you're wiring something that you go along and you measure them, you keep them all the same height. I mean, if you look down a wall and you got some boxes here and some up here and some down here, that's going to look stupid. You know, they may fall within code, but it's not going to look very neat. Um, so you'd want to measure them all. Um, switches, usually 45 to the bottom for a switch walking in a room um, or to turn a light on. 45 is kind of normal. Um, so to mount these, you're just going to come over, and I'll have you turn that camera for me if you would. Um, you would get your measurement up, put you a pencil mark there on your stud, and then you would mount that. Okay. I do not have a tape measure on me, so I'm not going to get real critical um, on where I mount this one. It's probably not going to be 12 inches. Um, but you just hook that kind of on that stud, and then you're going to drive these nails in. I like to start them, start them, and then move back to the other one, and then back and get that in. Now you see how I didn't have much room to swing, so you can turn that around. Another good thing that works when you get in a tight spot is get your nail started, and then you can put, these are called your linesman's pliers, and each of you have these. I want you guys using your tools, not the one in the cabinet. Um, but you can set that on that nail, and then you can hit out here where you can swing better and drive that in. Sometimes you have to do that to get into tight spots. So you have your box mounted. Um, next thing, if you had all your boxes and you're going to wire, start wiring up, you got to plan where your wire is going to run. I like to snap a line to keep my wire all the same height, at least a nice, lot neater looking job. Um, so when you move to drilling your holes, um, this works a lot nicer. It's called a right angle drill and it's made for electrical and plumbing work. And why it's nice, you can get this right between normal studs, 16 on center. If not, you have a bit sticking out with a regular drill, you can't get it in there square, so you're kind of going at an angle, okay? Um, by code, in two by four walls, that hole has to be right in the dead center of that stud real close or they'll knock you down. Um, what they'll make you do is put nail plates up and I didn't bring any of them out but I will here in a little bit. Um, so you got your hole drilled, you're gonna run your wire. Um, see if I can just get a chunk here. I am just gonna cut a little chunk of this off. You just wouldn't dead end this anywhere. You would want a loop. If you were wiring this all on the same circuit, you would loop from box to box, right? Um, anytime this wire goes into a box, there is a certain code that that has to stick out, okay? There's two holes on top, two holes on the bottom to run wire in, okay? Um, doesn't matter which ones you use. I like to use the one closest to the stud. Um, what I would like you leaving out here for wire length is six inches from the face of the box, okay? Not from the back of the box, from the face of the box, okay? Um, so you're going to leave that sticking out. Is it okay to leave seven? Yeah. I would rather see a little bit more than not enough, okay? That wire has to stick out that after it's stapled. This wire has to get stapled. So you can't leave six inches and then yank this where it needs to go and then it pulls that back because then it's going to be too short, okay? Then it wouldn't pass code. So six inches um, or a touch more, and then you're going to use wire staples to staple it, okay? Um, just They're set up just for 
so it'll go around wire. They, are, they do have these in different lengths. Um, you can only put three wires underneath one staple, okay? So you run into some issues with two by four walls, because what if you had four wires? What if you had a four gang box? This is a two gang, but what if you had a four gang box and there's a bunch of wires running in there? Um, you know, you can't staple only three together. So if you had to go side by side, it wouldn't be in the center of the stud anymore. Because just like the holes, these have to be stapled in the center of the stud. Um, what you would have to use, it's called a standoff. And when I go get um, some water or nail plate covers, I'll, I'll uh, grab that. So you want to get this right in the center of your stud. And by code, for a plastic box, you have to staple within six inches of this box. And I'll tell you that electrical inspectors are really picky. Some of them, if it was six and a quarter inches, they'd make you fix them, okay? Um, I like to stay closer than six, that's okay. I don't want him having to get his tape measure out. If you're putting it so close he has to get his tape measure out, you know, six and a quarter, and he's having to measure every one of yours, he's gonna find things to knock you down because you're making his work too hard. Keep them within four and then you don't have to worry about it. But every wire that runs into that box has to have, it has to be secured within that. Um, so you're gonna staple that in. Now if I would have had two wires running into this box, they both have to go under the same staple. You can't put this staple in, then run another wire, then run another staple, okay? Because what happens is, you can't see it, but this right here is kind of sharp here. And you would nick that wire that was over top more than likely, and you wouldn't know it. Then you drywall, then you hook your electric up and it don't work. Now you're tearing brand new drywall down to find your problem that you don't, you're not even really sure where it's at, okay? So you wouldn't want that. So you don't staple over top of staples, okay? So you get that secured in there. Um, your next step would be stripping it. Now, a couple different methods here. This is what I prefer you guys to use in here. Um, it's, a, it's a wire stripping tool to take the outside of the Romex uh, casing off. You just run this through here and it has a little point there, a triangle. And you stick that right in the middle of your wire and pinch down and then you pull it along here and it cuts that. That's, that's pretty safe using those. Then you have to cut this off somehow. You can use wire strippers, have a little cut thing here. Um, you can cut it with that. You can use a utility knife. Um, there's a piece of paper in here that covers that ground wire. You always break that off and get that out of the way. Okay, so you're gonna strip that back like that. Now, stripping, what you're supposed to leave of this on is an inch to an inch and a half of that coating up in that box, inside that box. So you don't just strip just a little bit of this off, okay? You gotta reach up in that box and strip. Another way you can do it is with a utility knife. I don't prefer this for you guys because um, it's really easy to cut your hand. The nice thing about cutting your hand with this, so it's a nice clean cut and they stitch up really nice, okay? Um, so you can reach up in there, run that along there. You just gotta be careful when you get to where your hands are and you get that stripped off, peel that back, cut that off. So that one is ready to wire up, okay? Um, inch to inch and a half left inside there. That's all you're supposed to have. Um, it's a matter. Any questions with any of that? A um, little bit of other types of wire that we really didn't cover. This is low voltage wire used for a doorbell. Um, also could be used for a furnace. You can't run high voltage for the, through this. And you also cannot have this inside a box that has high voltage. You cannot mix them, because you can imagine if something jumpered over onto this, it's gonna cause a fire, okay? Um, what else do they wanna talk about? Okay, um, 
you have to hook to these devices. I got a few different ones here. I got a three-way switch. I got a regular receptacle. I always want to call these outlets um, because after taking a few electrical classes, um, I've did a lot of wiring. I've wired a lot of houses. Um, and I've always called this an outlet, but the instructor in there would get really irritated with me because when you look stuff up in a code book, an outlet means they kind of got a different language in the code book. Um, an outlet is a box where wires come out of them. Okay, that is an outlet by, in the code book. This is not an outlet, this is a receptacle. So every time I'd say that, then he would correct me, no, that's a receptacle. So this is a receptacle, not an outlet. Um, but sometimes you'll catch me saying the wrong thing. Um, so you have to hook to these screws, okay? I don't know if any of you have ever wired much before. One thing that these have on the back side are some holes that you can push wires into. That does not pass code in Michigan, okay? You cannot do it. Um, so don't do that. Um, this type, when you push it in there, it has like a spring clip in there and it kind of holds the wire. If you ever have to change any of them, you'll find out why. Um, usually you have issues with them. After a while of turning the switch on and off or plugging stuff in, it jars that loose and then you don't make good connection. Then you got an electric issue. You got to find why it's not working. Um, in Michigan, you have to wrap them around the screws, okay? Um, to do that, you have to strip this. Um, you should be stripping about three quarters of an inch. Now on these strippers, you have to strip with the correct spot by the gauge of the wire. This is 14, so you're gonna go to the number 14. Now each side means something also. This says for solid wire, this says for stranded. So you gotta use a 14 on the solid side. What happens if you use too small a one, you nick that copper. And then when you make your curl to hook it to the screw, it may not break right then. But then as this is in the wall and you plug this in a few times, there's a little jarring action going on there. It'll end up snapping that wire and then you have an electrical issue that's kind of difficult to find, um, to trace down where it's at because you can't see it. You don't know where it, why it's not working. Um, so to strip this, you gotta use the 14. You wanna strip about three quarters of an inch of that wire, and you just pinch that down on that, twist a little bit, and it'll come right off, okay? Like I said, you'll make a little nick back here if you use the wrong size, and then it'll end up breaking. Your next step is to put your curl on. You're gonna pinch right down there on the tip of it, and you just, right at the tip, with the it has a little pair of pliers on the end, and then just a little twist makes a perfect curl every time, okay? What I see a lot of people do, they come in here and they're way down here and making their curl, okay? That would still work for a ground except for you got this long piece sticking out. But if you do it on one that you stripped the correct length, three quarters of an inch, and you come way here and strip, now all of a sudden, when you put that on the screw, I'm putting it on the incorrect side because them ain't loose, you put that on there, when you tighten this down, there's a little bit of that plastic underneath that screw. And what happens, it may work good at first, but then sooner or later after plugging stuff in, it won't make contact there anymore. It's hitting plastic only and not the metal, and it won't make contact. So you don't, you wanna make sure you're stripping and curling them correctly. Um, so them go on there. They have to go on there in a clockwise direction, okay? So if I'm looking at this side, the, a clock spins like this, the hook has to go on in a clockwise direction. What happens is if you put them on there the wrong way, it's trying to push the wire off as you're tightening it, okay? You want it to draw on. Um, and it may work good at first, there you go, it's one of them other problems, but eventually from that little jarring, it'll loosen that screw up and that'll pop loose of there and you won't make good contact. Um, so you gotta make sure you're doing that. So on an outlet, you, they got different colors here. There's brass, there's silver, and there's green. What is green always? Ground, it has to be ground, okay? Brass is always black. 
white is always, or silver is always white, okay? Um, do any of you have outlets at your house that you can, part of it's hot all the time, part of it you can turn like a lamp on and shut it off from a switch from that outlet that's plugged in? Okay, there, that is a way to wire. That's another instance when you would use this three-way wire, um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. In order to do that, because this is, I want to explain this because sometimes people have electrical problems with this and um, they're kind of hard to find if you don't know this. If you look between these screws, there's a little chunk of metal right there that loops them together. And then the same on this side. When you're wiring this, say you wanted this one to turn on by a switch, but this one to turn on, be on all the time for like your clock, but then this one turned a light on in your room. Um, you can't have two different powers run into it. So you have to break this so you can have two powers. One for coming from the switch to switch it, and then one that's a constant hot. So it's really easy, sometimes it saves you some wire to use this wire for that, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so another thing that has to happen with these is you have two screws for black, two for white, one for ground. You can only have one wire underneath a screw, okay? You can't put two wires under one screw. So what happens if you got three wires running in there? Okay, or two, because you'd have two grounds, right? You gotta hook them both up, you can't just forget about one of them. It has to make a continuous loop to, to work right. What you have to do is called pigtailing, okay? And pigtailing is pretty simple. Um, I am gonna grab some wire over here. Will you stop that just for a second?